In many places in the Bible, the image of marriage is used to describe a lasting, committed, loving relationship between couples. And, as we read today in our readings, the image of marriage is also used to convey the lasting, committed, loving relationship between God and you. A relationship of abundant love that God makes with you individually and with us together, the whole church on earth, and with all creation. A relationship in a covenant promise with God that God does not break ever. I asked my friend Jim Ellison to share with us what his marriage covenant means. His marriage of over 65 years with his beautiful beloved wife, Beverly. Jim. For those of you who may not know, my wife Beverly Ellison left us early in the morning of Thanksgiving Day about seven weeks ago after a 65-year marriage. She had been a resident at Oak Crossing Nursing Home for about 20 months, suffered from several medical problems, the most serious being dementia, known also as Alzheimer's disease. I have been asked the secret to a happy 65-year marriage. And my best answer is simply the word kindness. That the two are kind to one another. It is the glue that helps hold the marriage together. Kindness can be expressed in many ways, for example, such as letting the partner know they are valued and important by listening to them putting them first whenever possible, helping as much as you can with the daily tasks, and knowing that you are committed to the union, for better or worse, and in sickness and in health, and letting them know that you love them. In marriage, we go through several changes, bride and groom, husband and wife, mom and dad, and if we are lucky, grandma and grandpa. These busy years of making a home and raising a family went by quickly for us. They were the good times. And if we both live on, one partner may gain a new responsibility. It is that of caregiver, which may be the most important and rewarding and difficult of them all. Now one, <clears throat> excuse me. Now one partner cares for the other who can no longer do what is necessary. Your shift is 24-7, and it can be wearisome. When the caregiver can no longer provide the needed care at home, it will mean moving the loved one to a long-term care facility where professionals, perhaps including hospice, can provide for the needs of that person. The small room became their new home and their final home. This is what happened to Beverly and I. I should mention that the new home and the loss of the ability to think and speak clearly can be frightening to the person. My job as caregiver changes now as the loved one enters the last days or weeks or months of their life journey, but it does continue. You are the one person your loved one knows best and trusts the most. 
Therefore, I needed to show up, that is, visit each day as much as possible and spend as much time as I can. What I could do was to sit close and hold her hand and assure this special person that I will take care of any concerns or worries that they might have. Provide any needed help and never ever leave them alone and let them know that you love them. From this simple kindness, they will be comforted and feel more secure. And you may have to provide these assurances during each visit. And then inevitably Beverly's earthly journey ends and the family grieves over the loss of a wife and a mother and a grandmother. And now after 65 years, I am alone again. And I remembered the words of the old folk song, the good times are all gone. But, you know, it is said that the depth of sorrow that you feel is a measure of the love that we shared for 65 years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. I, I wouldn't normally ask someone so soon after the funeral and after the death of a loved one. Um, but when I talked with Jim and just heard the witness that you have of love and of caring, um, so faithful and so committed, I wanted you all to be able to hear that also in your journeys with each other. So thank you, and God bless you. For Christians, marriage is a sacred and a lifelong commitment of two people who are called by God to love each other. And some of us are blessed to find the way to keep this commitment for a lifetime, like Jim and Bev, however long and challenging that may be. And some of us, because we aren't perfect, we're broken people, we may have broken relationships, a divorce, a separation, but that does not separate you from God's love. God keeps the covenant promise of loving kindness and forgiveness made with you in your baptism. God keeps it your whole life long, even when your memory fades, even when you run away. God stays with you. In Christ, God provides abundant replenishment when we're running on empty, abundant encouragement when we fail, and abundant love. In the very first miracle of his ministry, the wedding at Cana, Jesus shows the world for the first time the abundance of joy that can be part of your life when you invite him to spend every day with you and invite him to be part of all your relationships. I don't know, Jay, do you have that slide with a picture of the, of the jar, the water jar. Yeah, there it is. I, thank you, Jay. I want to point out this picture. I don't know if you can see it really well. Um, but this is, a, this is actually a water jar from the time of Jesus. And you can see the size of that. It's bigger than the people standing behind it. 
This is a, one of the stone jars from Jesus' day um, that I saw when I was in the Holy Land, in Cana, actually, um, a couple months ago. I used to imagine that Jesus changed um, those, those six jars, and they were just kind of, you know, just kind of a, a, a big, but kind of a normal size big. I had no idea they were like this big. Um, that would make abundant wine, my friends. And in the image of the relationship with Jesus, with God, that would make abundant joy. So does that mean that your life is without any pain or without tears or without challenges or frustrations or hurts? No. But it does mean like a perfect marriage, you will have someone, each of you will have someone to go through everything with you. Someone who will cry with you, who will speak truth and wisdom to you, who will help you find a way through the challenges and out of the pits that we fall into. Someone you can trust Someone who will be there to say, I love you when you wake up and when you fall asleep. Jesus came to give you life abundantly in an intimate relationship so that you, knowing Jesus and knowing that committed relationship you have with him, you can share that real hope-filled grace and kindness that you've received with everyone else in your life. At the wedding at Cana, Jesus' mother instructed the disciples and the servants to do whatever he tells you. And by doing that, by following Jesus' instructions, they witnessed the revealing of his glory at a marriage, and how that, that miracle brought abundant joy to share with everyone. When we do what Jesus tells us at the time when we are in need, following his instruction can bring about something even better, something even more than we could envision. And seeing that, the gospel tells us his disciples believed in him and they followed him into a new life of ministry, into many more miracle stories that began with that first one and continue today. Let us believe and trust that this abundant life and joy with Jesus are for you and that God, like like our bridegroom, rejoices, renews the joy, renews the joy that God's Spirit has been pouring into you every day since your baptism. And my friends, I brought a special gift back to share with you. When I was in Cana in Galilee last year, or yeah, it was last year, it was November, um, I saw those big stone jars. Um, our teacher said that Jesus' miracle of changing water into wine produced so much wine that it is still being served there today. And she winked as she said that. Um, but then she brought us to a wine tasting shop and, and we tasted the wine at Cana and I brought back some for each of you. So. Um, we will be sharing that in our communion today. And may God bless you abundantly. Amen.